Management has a free hand to replace striking workers with new employees within certain guidelines. You can also pay non-striking employees and new hires what you offered the union before the strike. You can stop paying wages and benefits to strikers. You can stop honoring a union shop and discontinue payroll deduction of union dues the day the contract expires. You can screen employees in anticipation of a strike, but it would be wise not to flaunt these actions. You can insist that your suppliers, drivers, or their supervisors cross picket lines to make deliveries. Your employees and suppliers have the right to cross picket lines as long as they do so peacefully. Equally important are the things management cannot do during a strike. You must not make a final offer to employees unless an impasse is reached in negotiations. You cannot refuse to bargain in good faith during the strike, but you are not required to make a concession. Do not threaten union employees for honoring the picket line. Don't promise anything to union employees for returning to work. Never use force to cross a picket line. If blocked, drive to a safe place and call in. Do not carry a weapon across a picket line. It is not allowed by the National Labor Relations Act. Do not deny vacation pay to strikers if it has been earned. You also cannot offer super seniority to non-strikers. As stated in the National Labor Relations Act, there are also many restrictions on strikers. Strikers do not have the right to block or coerce employees, suppliers, or customers from entering or leaving the facility. They cannot block, bump, jostle, or hit anyone coming or going. They are not allowed to picket on company property. This is considered trespassing nor damage any vehicle or property passing through a picket line. They must not block access with vehicles, barricades, tacks, a human chain, or in any other way. It's illegal for them to carry sticks, clubs, or guns, or any other potential weapon. They cannot threaten bodily harm to non-striking employees or their families. Lastly, they cannot attack the property of the company or non-striking employees. As you can see, the biggest source of trouble during a strike is the act of crossing the picket line. Every employee should be well rehearsed in techniques that can minimize problems. Again, much of this is common sense. Remember to always drive slowly and be prepared to stop. Keep your windows rolled up and doors locked. In this day and age, it's a good idea to have a cell phone and camera in the car, but never take pictures or notes unless there is physical or threatening union activity. But some precautions aren't so obvious. Don't go through the picket line or even near it any more than necessary. No extra trips in and out to lunch. Bring it with you if needed. Try to approach a facility in such a way you can make a right turn into the entrance. Watch for the instructions of law enforcement or security officers on site. Do not acknowledge or converse with picketers no matter how they may provoke you. If you're blocked, stay as long as it's safe, but do not risk your security. Go to where you can safely phone in and request transportation assistance or wait until police have control of the picket line. If your vehicle is damaged, report it to security as soon as you're in a safe place. Watch to see if you're followed out of the gate and call 911 if you are. Then pull into a police or fire station if possible. Here are some more useful do's and don'ts for management once the strike is underway. Do tell union employees that they have the right to cross the picket line and work if they care to, and that the company will make every effort to provide security if they do. And tell union employees forthrightly that the company will continue operating, if that's your decision, and that you may hire replacement workers. And when the media arrives, only permit comments cleared by your labor attorney. Refer all questions from outsiders to your labor attorney and designated public relations people. By all means, keep a detailed daily incident log and collect witness statements to document all violations by strikers and keep a written record of non-union workers' communications regarding decisions not to come to work and why. Ask workers if they're being harassed in any way, but do not ask if they've been contacted by strikers or union officials. Do send any returning strikers immediately to your Human Resources Department for proper briefing. Remember, do your bargaining only with union officials in scheduled meetings. Don't discuss the strike, negotiations, or company activities with striking employees, even those who seem friendly. In fact, don't even meet with striking employees for any reason, unless union representatives are present, too.
and never lose your temper, no matter how you may be taunted by strikers. That would play right into the hands of those trying to get an improper reaction. To stay away from trouble, don't poll union employees prior to a strike. And once a strike has begun, never threaten union members for honoring the picket line. Don't promise union employees any reward for returning to work. All bargaining must be with the union only. Don't spy on union activities or question strikers about the union. Don't tell strikers they've been fired, replaced, or otherwise lost their jobs. Don't tell strikers they've lost benefits or seniority. Now, what about workers who are not on strike? How should they behave? Well, in general, they should act friendly toward those on strike. They should be observant, however, taking notes discreetly and reporting any unusual or illegal activity to management. In general, workers should avoid talking to strikers and not attempt to persuade them to return to work. The less workers have to do with strikers, the better. They should not ask them anything about the union or the strike. They shouldn't meet with them under any circumstances. Now, truck security is an area of special concern because trucks operate away from the more controlled plant or facility setting. Protecting drivers, trucks, and their cargo during a strike will require special procedures. Inspect each truck thoroughly, inside and out before loading. The route should be reviewed with security before dispatching. Before leaving, the area should be checked for suspicious vehicles. On the road, the driver assistant should be alert for vehicles that may be following. At all stops, one person with a camera should remain with the truck to document any attempts at mischief. All suspicious acts, harmful acts, or threats should be reported at once to the police and to security. Well, finally, one day it's over. And though there will be some lingering bitterness, getting back to work helps get everyone back to normal. But as much as you'd like to forget the whole dispute, there will never be a better time to sit down with your security firm and conduct a thorough and frank post-action analysis. While everyone's memories were fresh, we sat down with special response and reviewed what happened, what worked, what didn't, and why. Revisions and improvements should be made to your ongoing safety contingency plans. When the next unforeseen crisis comes along, whether it's a work stoppage, natural disaster, a downsizing or whatever, you'll be able to react calmly and efficiently. I hope that in the course of this presentation, you've learned how vital it is to bring in strike security specialists prior to contract negotiations. In-house security or outside contract guards performing on a regular contract basis are likely to have personal relationships with strikers. This can lead to leaks, hesitation in carrying out orders, and emotional complications that can last well beyond the strike. But not just any security firm will do. Here, the right people are everything. You're going to need a firm with extensive experience in strike security and with strong references from major clients. A firm that brings complete understanding of every aspect of operational, physical, psychological, and public image threats and how to defend against them. I think you'll find, as we did, that Special Response Corporation is indeed the right people for the job. We have on staff a substantial workforce big enough to respond to any situation. Our people all have a military or police background, every single one, and they are highly trained in many specialized skills that will be needed, including sophisticated surveillance, documentation, and non-lethal weapons. They're ready to help you in a pre- and post-action stages, and they're ready to respond 24-7 anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. The Special Response Strike Management Team will anticipate problems, work with you to draw up comprehensive plans for pre-strike preparation, strike action, and post-strike analysis, deploy security forces efficiently, guide management and workers through the crisis, earn the respect of the opposition, and then quietly slip away. Isn't that exactly what you're looking for in this situation? If so, you take the next step today. Ask Special Response to prepare an inexpensive special report for your firm. It'll give you an informative and actionable summary of your current security posture and risks. And that way, 
Whatever the next weeks and months may bring, you'll have taken the first step toward bringing in the right people to see you through.